Okay, so this week we are going to talk about something that is one of the pretty criti critical areas of sales and selling called the value gap in the buyer's mind. And if you don't know what the value gap is, let me explain it to you. And we'll then talk about the five things that are most of the important aspects related to the buyer's gap and what you can do to, to cross the buyer's gap in your prospect's mind. So look, so when anyone is faced with a decision to buy something, everyone faces a very, very simple choice. And that choice, and it's happening, by the way, for you and your buyers right now, and it's happening for me when I engage in sales activities. By the way, today I want a nice deal for, for a piece of business, which is great. It happens in the case for, for, for Darren, who works in my podcast. It's the same thing for everyone. And it's a really simple choice. Is the product or service I am looking to buy worth the money that the other person is charging? So I'll repeat that again, just so you get it. Is the product or service that I am looking to buy worth the money that the other person or company is charging. And I call it the value gap between what you want to charge as a, as a seller versus what the buyer is prepared to pay or feels that they're comfortable to pay. And there are what I call five factors that affect that value gap. And by the way, your job as a salesperson or business person is to, if you are engaging with that potential client is to cross that gap so that they buy from you. Because that's what sales is all about. We want to get someone to buy from a student and to make that happen. And so there are five factors I want you to think about and consider when it comes to the value gap. The first one is this, what can they physically afford? And there are some sales trainers that will say to you, oh, there's never a budget and everyone will always do what they want. But that's not always true, right? We all might want to have the money to buy a private plane and take us around the world, okay? But if we don't have the 50 million quid or the 100 grand a month it costs to lease a plane, then we can't do it. It's reality. So whilst, you know, we might want to be in a position where, you know, we, we want to sell a service to them, if they physically don't have that money or the money is not there or they can't afford it for whatever reason in their company or in their business or personal situation, it's not going to happen. So, so that's the first factor as to why the, 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 the value gap exists and, and what we need to, to do to solve it. The second thing then is, if they can afford it, is what are they prepared to spend? What are they prepared to spend? What do they actually see as being the reason as to why they will cross that gap. And I'll give you an example. There was a, um, a giant spider a number of weeks ago that was sold in a New York auction house. And this giant spider is was $32 million that it went for. $32 million for a giant spider. Uh, and by the way, your art is one of these things is that is an absolute example of what people value and are prepared to spend. But there was a buyer who bought that giant spider by a, an artist, I can't remember the name of the artist now, because they felt that it had a specific value for them. And they have their own limits on what it's going to, you know, everyone will have their limits on what they are prepared to spend for something. And there's another great story I talk to people about, around when Apple first launched the App Store, they, 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 there was a clever developer that worked out that the maximum price for the App Store was $999. And he created an app that literally just made a sound. And the sound basically was that this app was downloaded by, I think it was around 400 people. So this guy made nearly 400,000 pounds or $400,000 just by, and, and people, and, what, and the question was always asked, why did people want to spend that money? And it's because they could show their friends they had it. They bought the most expensive app. Now I think that's daft, but it's true. So people are prepared to spend. It's what people are prepared to spend in order to be able to achieve what they want or to show something or what they value. So the buyer's gap is around what is that person prepared to spend? The third issue around the value gap is the extent of the pain or the problem they have. And this is topical, actually, because me and Darren were talking about uh, something earlier on. He was talking about when he had toothache. And uh, he had toothache a couple of uh, years back that was really severe toothache. And he literally said to his wife, I don't care what it costs, just get me a dentist that can fix this problem ASAP. So if the extent of the problem is huge, and I would say to people, if you were walking in the desert without water, and needed a bottle to survive, you'd, you know, normally water would be, you know, one pound, two pound a, a bottle. 
But if you had £20,000 and the person said, I'm, I'm going to sell you that for £20,000 or you die, you'd spend it, right? Because life with no money is better than life money with no life, right? So the reality is, what's the extent of the pain or the problem that that person has? So that's the other thing that affects this value gap. And the fourth element around that thinks that is the, is the value gap is their confidence that the solution that they're going with can solve the problem that they have. So I'll give you another example. You know, I might be intrigued. Someone said to me there was a £5,000 tablet that I could pop in my mouth that would allow me to eat what I want and eat everything I want at all and drink what I want and still lose £4 a week without exercise. I would think, yeah, nice idea. But if I didn't have any confidence that it could solve the problem, then, then I'm not buying it, okay? And building belief in the buyer's mindset is another critical factor, and we'll talk about that in other episodes. But the fact is, this tablet might be great. It might have all these things, and lots of people, unfortunately, scammers do this. They pr promise lots of great things. But unless the buyer has total confidence that this, that's, that offering can solve their current position, they ain't going to buy and then the final thing then around about the the, buyer, the the value gap or the final thing, the, one of the final things I'd say is the emotional feeling that that end outcome will get them. So uh, an example of this is, is people will often say they go to sporting events and I've, you know, lots of sporting clubs and I like sports myself and people will say they spent hundreds of pounds on a ticket or to see a popular musician they wanted to. Their last, you know, concert for Elton John, probably there was someone in that audience that probably spent a thousand pound, two thousand pound, I don't know, whatever the figure was, that literally because they couldn't put a price on seeing that last concert or they couldn't put a price on seeing their sports club or their nation win a trophy for the first time. The fact that they could say I was there and the feeling was priceless. So those are the what I think are five factors that constitute what I call the buy at the value gap. And it's that gap between where that person is right now and where you want to be. And your job is a simple one. It's, it's to make sure that they feel comfortable to make that gap happen and to cross that gap. And the reality is, if you can't, if the gap is too large between where they are and where you are, they will stay the same and, and they don't buy the product and you as a seller lose out. And I often, you know, hear people in sales situations saying things like, I can't justify spending that amount, or we just don't have those funds available to us right now, or I like it, but I just don't know if I like it a lot, or I just, I like it, but I'm not sure if it will work. And it's our job as a seller to be able to bridge that gap. It's our job as a seller to bring that to life. And, 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 and when we don't bridge that gap, when we have this issue that between what we want to sell our service or product for and where they're at, we, we get disappointment, we get the energy that we've built up in the sale goes to, goes to waste. So the, the, reality, the reality is we've got to be in a position where we have to bridge the value gap. And the only way we can do that in sales and selling is to find out what's going on inside their mind. We've only way we can find out what they value and how much they value that and what the extent of the problem is and what they're prepared to spend and what they can physically afford and the confidence that they've got in the solution is by asking questions. And our job as sales and business people is to ask the right questions, as I always say, the right questions in the right way at the right time will give you the answer to enable you to make sure that the value gap gets crossed. But to end this podcast, there's a sort of a, a, a summary, and I, and I make this a really clear thing. If you can't solve that value gap, if you can't be in a position where you move that person from where they're thinking they are to where they want to be and to, and to making that decision to spend the money, you lose out. You simply lose out, and all that time and effort gets lost. So I guess what I'm saying to you today is I just want you to think about this uh, as a message. You know, My method for, for today is think about this, buy, this value gap. And think and ask yourself the question, because the other person is definitely asking this question. They are saying, is the product or service I'm looking to buy worth the money that the other person is charging? And if it's not, they ain't going to buy. And that's going to create disappointment for you and you're going to fail in what you're doing. So just get yourself in the mind of the buyer. Think what that value gap is. Think about those five things that I've talked about and really just be in a position where you can close off those issues through asking the right questions to get yourself in a position where they do cross the gap, you do get the business over the line and it means good things for you and your family and your company. 
So I hope that's helpful and give me some ideas of the value gap. Have a little think about it. Let me know in the comments section below what you think, whether it works for you, some ideas that you can do. And if you want some other tips and ideas on how you can help cross that gap, let me know. Also subscribe to my Saturday sales email. This is a concept that I shared on that email a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and it's a concept that loads of the people on that email loved as well. So if you want to get more insights like that and uh, you know, get them some, some insights on a Saturday morning that uh, can help you with your sales plans, then, then head to my website, jameswhite.business and sign up for the newsletter. But as a normal, I always finish the podcast with an inspirational story. And I wanted to share a story this week of a guy called Luke Grunfield Shaw. He uh, was diagnosed with um, in 2018 with stage four cancer, just 24. And he basically, uh, in 2020, he set off from Bristol and he cycled through 29 countries to basically 30,000 miles to, to complete the, the challenge. And he was set off with this issue of terminal stage four cancer, you know, basically last stage of cancer you can get. And yet alone, this guy has gone through as a young man, been able to, to literally trans, you know, travel across 29 countries and raise nearly you know, over 125,000 pounds for young lives versus cancer. And the thing for me is that it's that hope that he gives that actually, I think anything's possible. I can achieve, I will achieve, had a dream, had a vision, made it happen. As I always say, and I share these inspirational stories because these are people just like you who have a something happened in their world. They've decided not to let that situation affect them. They've decided to take as much control as they can and make something happen. And as I always say, when people do that and it gives us that inspiration, that idea, that insight that, that actually we can make anything happen, it also puts into, into perspective some of the worries and the challenges and concerns we have. So I hope that's given you some inspiration. Look at Luke Granfield Shaw, great element for him. I hope the, the, the value gap in the buyer's mind has given you some insights as well. Uh, always remember, if we can't get them to buy our service or product for what we want them to and what we sell it at, without discounting, by the way, then uh, we're not doing our job properly and we're not getting the results we want. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know in the comment section below if it's helped you. But thanks again for your ears this week and have a brilliant week and I'll see you next time. Take care.